there and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today we are going to be doing a, some myth busting. Specifically, we're going to talk about five lies slash myths, misconceptions that people have about natural cosmetics and what goes into them. Because what people believe to be natural, what companies believe to be natural, does not always line up up. I don't believe companies that label their products as natural or are lying to you or are bad. This is just a marketing term and these brands have to use marketing terms like this to set themselves apart from other brands because we know there are so many beauty brands out there. And that brings us to our first myth slash lie. So the first myth slash lie about natural cosmetics is that the term natural is defined and regulated. So as far as I know, Europe, Canada, US, there is no legal definition to define what natural means in terms of marketing. So when companies put this on their labels, it doesn't really mean anything. It means what the company says it means. And that's kind of the problem is that what people believe doesn't necessarily align with what companies believe. So please let me know down below before we get into the next four myths, what you believe natural to mean, because that's gonna tie in with the next four that we talk about. There actually is in the US, there is a bill that is trying to get passed which is the Natural Cosmetic Act, and this looks to define one of the stipulations in that order for a product to be labeled natural, that they have to have 70% of natural material in the product, and one way that they are going to validify this is to have what they call C14 testing by what I believe, I believe the suppliers are gonna be required to do this, the suppliers of the raw materials, but this test is basically a way to distinguish petroleum product, petroleum derived products from other naturally sourced products. I'm not super familiar with this testing, but it doesn't seem to me that it would distinguish anything but petroleum based products from everything else. That's the only regular, that's the only bill I've seen so far that is going to look to define what natural is. So the second one we're gonna get into is that people generally believe that natural cosmetics are always safer than a synthetic material. And we know that not to be true. That is our second myth. The Usually the one that people go for is poison ivy is natural and that is not safe for you. One thing is, is a lot of these natural ingredients, natural extracts, natural oils can cause allergic reactions, which is not safe. The thing is, is that these, com these ingredients in particular are made up of many, many, many different compounds. So any of those compounds can trigger an allergic reaction. Many of these compounds may be something that triggers an allergic reaction in you or cause, gives you a rash and whatnot. I have one friend and he is allergic to cat saliva. Cat dander's fine, he can hang out around cats, but if a cat licks him or if he gets any sort of that on him, that's when he has a reaction. So it could just be one component of these ingredients that is causing this. What usually natural brands will have a significant number of these ingredients on there, a, a good list of them, and by doing this, if you do get a reaction, you're not gonna know exactly what triggered it. You just know that that product causes a reaction in you. So that makes it really hard to pinpoint what is causing this reaction. Secondly, a lot of clays and minerals and naturally mined type of things can have contaminants in them. Um, for instance, talc and asbestos, that's a very common one that we've seen. And these things can be tested for, but inherently these things are not naturally safer than something that is synthetically made. For example, iron oxides in the US have to be synthetically made if you're gonna use them in your cosmetics as colorant. So these are used in foundations, eyeshadows, um, lipsticks, all that kind of stuff, but the natural ones have so much of these contaminants that it cannot be controlled for by sourcing it naturally, so it is required to be made synthetically because they can control for a lot of these contaminants a lot better. Number three is that natural cosmetics are always more eco-friendly or sustainable. The packaging you typically see for naturally cosmetics is 
green, it might have plants on this, and this is what we would refer to as greenwashing. Greenwashing is the practice of using imagery such as green and plants in order to evoke a sense of being eco-friendly and enticing you to buy it because you believe that to be true. I actually attended an event recently that was called Green Beauty Night. This one happened to be in LA and part of it was that they had a panel in which they discussed issues with sustainability in cosmetics, natural versus synthetic, this very complex issue of being um, eco-friendly and the image of being eco-friendly and what it actually means to be have sustainable cosmetics. This event is hosted by the Eco Well, which is a podcast hosted by a woman named Jen and she interviews a lot of industry professionals. She herself is a scientist and talks about these kind of issues. And it, when that video goes live of the panel that I attended, I will post it down below. And at this event and at, in this panel, one of the panelists was Kenna Whitnell. And one of the points that she brought up is a lot of these brands are kind of romanticizing these exotic ingredients which come from remote areas, etc. that kind of thing. And the problem with this is that these are from remote areas, so it's a lot harder to get there and transport the product. These may be endangered, so you are then pulling um, an endangered species out of the population of this and that inherently would make this not really eco-friendly. Some of these in ingredients that go into cosmetics may take a lot of land to produce a very small amount of the ingredient. Maybe after you're done growing said plant, maybe the soil is depleted and you can't grow anything there for a while. All of which of these are not necessarily eco-friendly. So sometimes it might be better if you can produce an ingredient synthetically and just make it in a vat in a single room and be able to produce that in a smaller area, use less space, less starting material, create less waste than it would be to grow a plant, transport it, and go through all of that. And this whole idea of sustainability in cosmetics is a very, very complex issue. It's not just a black and white, it's as if it's a natural source, it's better than something made synthetically. So number four myth, natural always means the ingredient is unprocessed. So a lot of the ingredients in here you'll find aren't just taken from nature or like cold pressed and that's the only processing that's done. A lot of these ingredients require extra steps and reactions in order to yield the ingredient that is used in your final product. For instance, Coconut is a starting material in a lot of cosmetic ingredients, but it is reacted with certain things in order to yield the ingredient that you finally will see in the product. Even extracts, for example, can be taken out using solvents and that kind of thing. It just there's a lot of steps that go into it, and just because it's natural doesn't mean it was not it didn't go through some kind of processing. And the last myth, number five, that we're going to talk about is that natural means the ingredient wasn't made synthetically. So I understand that this is confusing. There are times at which you can produce a compound that you find in nature and make it synthetically. And a molecule per molecule, you are not gonna see a difference most likely. So it may incur in nature, but the one that ends up in your product may have been made synthetically. This is what we would call nature identical. So it is natural in the sense that it does occur in nature, but the one that you find in your cosmetic may be made synthetically. This is true of a lot of natural preservatives. This is also true of the iron oxide that I mentioned earlier. They are what you would find in nature, but they are created in a lab setting. And this is done a lot of times either for it being cost effective, it could be because of being able to control for contaminants. Like the iron, and in the iron oxide example, if a, if a company says that their product is 100% natural and it uses and it's a color cosmetic that uses the iron oxides, and then that either means that they are using this loophole of it being nature identical, or they are using iron oxides that were found in nature, and that would be a little bit more alarming, so let us hope that they're going with the first option. So I hope that this video kind of t maybe taught you something about that natural isn't what it always seems. Like I said, this doesn't mean that these companies that use this term are bad or maybe that they're, or they're, they're lying to you. In fact, this just means that if something being natural is important to you, then it is important for you to define what you believe natural to be and 
go to the co go to the company's website and see what they define as natural too because your definitions might not be the same so let me know if you guys learned something if you found this video interesting as always i will leave down below resources if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button so you will never miss a new upload and with that i will see you in my next video bye